Well, you have to remember that broadcasting is still a much favored and much used medium. So it's not a question that uh, other types of delivery means are supplanting broadcasting. But of course, we have to look to the future when there will be a need for a kind of partnership between broadcasting and uh, internet uh, delivered system. Possibly this is uh, in the age of 5G when there may be a broadcast mode and so on. But I'm quite convinced that there will always be a need for broadcasting to serve large amounts of people at the same time. That's what it does in an unbeatable way. But we have to be a partner to the new forms which allow interaction and the other features that the public wants. The future television, I think you can imagine it as a kind of, if you imagine that this is an island here and that there are waves coming in either side uh, of the island and there's a wave here which is to do uh, with improving the technical quality of the picture, making it more real and there's a wave here which is associated with uh, ICT, Internet and Communications Technology. All of those things, voice activation and so on, clouds and uh, social networks and so on over here and the improvements in technicality over here. So all of these two waves are coming in over the island and at some point they'll have to meet up and match. This is a rather inexpensive demonstration but essentially this is what we have to see is the future with the mix of ICT and new technology for images and sound. Well, ultra-high definition television is something that the ITU has been very, very much involved since the start. You could even say that it was begun here in the ITU. At the moment, we have a system which is called 4K, which has about 8 megapixels, but uh, we can look forward to extensions of that in the near future with something called next generation audio, which will allow the listener to uh, hear sounds coming from any direction around him. Very useful if you have a very large TV screen. High frame rate, which is to do with making when there's movement, less judder in the movement, and high dynamic range, making the pictures more sharp and sparkly. These will come along and they may be followed by uh, an 8K system, 32 megapixels, with even more definition. But of course there's lots of questions here about that, about whether we have the bandwidth and the compression technology to provide that for the public. But it may be that the next step beyond 4K UHD TV is 8K UHD TV. But there are other technologies too that need to be thought about in the future of broadcasting. Absolutely, the ITU is fundamental. Tech, common technical standards are the enabling mechanism for competition in a market environment. Nothing really succeeds very well without common standards and the ITU endeavors to get common worldwide standards for all kinds of systems associated uh, with television production and distribution. And uh, of course the EBU uh, tries to help. We make I inputs uh, to the ITU. But the core of this issue is that standardization is an enabling mechanism for competition and that is an essential essential part of the market economy. That's why we need so much the ITU and its work. Well, these were the great hopes of a few years ago, virtual reality and augmented reality. But there were found to be drawbacks with virtual reality. Some of the problems is it's very difficult to get people to watch it for longer than a few minutes. And uh, that the bandwidth that you need is very, very large. So it's not easy at the moment to predict how successful virtual reality uh, will be in the future. But the most promising kind today is what's called 360 VR. This is the ability of the viewer to look around him, maybe by swishing on a TV screen or maybe by using a headset. This still requires an awful lot of bandwidth and there's been recently an ITU recommendation for the standard there. So we don't know whether this will prove possible to deliver because of that very high bandwidth. Augmented reality is interesting and invaluable in many areas, but my own hunch is that it's going to be most useful in terms of television program production, where we can add all kinds of animated footballers or whatever uh, to a scene to make it more interesting for the viewer. So AR, probably something for television program production in my view. VR, probably it's about 360 VR, at least at the moment.
purpose of television, what it's for, has never changed since the beginning. It's to make you laugh, to make you cry, to make you feel, to shock you, to inform you, and so on. This will never change. It tells a story. And the, you have to do this by means of a television screen. So my hunch is that the television screen, as such, uh, will be with us for a very long time. Of course, there will be personalized viewing experiences with uh, mobile phones and tablets and so on. But the mainstay of viewing in the family, I'm convinced, will be the uh, television set uh, with ever-increasing resolution. That's the evolution ahead of us and ever-improving sound, giving you a more immersive feeling. You can't really have an immersive feeling holding out an iPhone out here. Your arm gets tired for a start. World Television Day brings to the attention of the world the value that television makes, the contribution that it makes to our society, the cohesion that it provides, and uh, uh, the, uh, the ways in which uh, we inform people, we let them be part of their society. Essentially, it's about giving viewers an identity, their, their national identity, their club identity, whatever it is. This is essential, and this is what television does. Thank you.